Hi everyone, Ainsley here from Small Fry Creations where we tackle everything DIY and this week I'm building a TV unit. Let me show you how I did it. This jointing jig for the table saw is super simple. It's just a piece of MDF with some blocks screwed to one side and I have some little toggle clamps on top which hold down the timber. The timber needs to be overhanging the jig which in this case is easy and I set the table saw so that the blade cuts the whole way through the timber with the MDF running along the fence creating one straight edge. Once I've run the boards through on the jig, I can then take the jig away, adjust the table saw fence and run the new straight edge against the fence, cutting the other side in turn giving me two parallel edges. The timber is all jointed and we are ready to get to glue up and each panel is going to consist of three pieces of timber. I am going to use biscuits to help me with the glue up. These are not going to add strength but they will definitely help with alignment top to bottom. I used them in my dining room table project and they were the hero of that project for sure so I'm going to repeat that here on this project. Now to cut the biscuits I'm going to make a mark where I want the biscuit to go and then a mark 30mm beyond that point and that's how far I need to move the router. That'll give me a really nice slot for the biscuits to fit in. So let's Let's go ahead and get these biscuits cut and then we can get to glue up. The biscuit cutter router bit is honestly my new favourite thing in the workshop as it really does help lower the stress levels in the glue up as the biscuits help bring everything into alignment top to bottom. I make sure the biscuits are not anywhere near where I'm going to cut down the track so that they don't become exposed and I space them about 300mm apart. I use Type Bond 3 for these glue ups as a lot of Aussie hardwoods are very oily and the Type Bond 3 gives a good bond and has the added bonus of being water resistant. I apply clamps to the top and bottom of the panels to create even pressure and I use some steel bars as calls as an additive to help keep everything aligned. I had to glue up two of these big panels and they're exactly the same so I have combined the glue ups so that I don't bore you. While the big panels were in glue up, I could start to work on the sides. Each section of the TV unit has a black metal bracket on one side and a wooden panel on the other. One panel needs to be about 300mm high and the other one 420 I cut the timber oversize as I'll trim them to size once I have them out of glue up. With the pieces cut, I could put them into clamps and get them glued up. I didn't use biscuits here as the pieces were smaller so a little more manageable and the steel bar will do the job of keeping everything aligned. With the smaller panels in glue up I could then get the larger ones out of glue and start rough sanding everything. With the sander in turbo mode and with 80 grit sandpaper I could get the panels rough sanded in a matter of minutes. All right, I've got the pieces rough sanded, but before I spend any more time sanding things that I may not even need, I'm gonna cut the pieces to length and to width, and then I can concentrate on getting everything joined and sanded and looking nice. To cut the end square, I'm gonna use my new track saw. I have to be really careful because I do not have a lot of room to play to trim them to length. So I'm gonna trim the least amount that I can off this end. And when I glued them up, I made sure they were as close to each other as possible so that I can maximize my length at this end because I need to cut them to 1800 long. So I'm gonna go ahead, get everything square, cut to length, then I'll take them over to the table saw, I think, and get them cut to width. The track saw is a new addition to the workshop and it's working out great. Being battery powered means it's quick and easy on the setup and I can take the saw right to the workpiece. It cuts through the hardwood with very little trouble, but I do make the cuts in a couple of passes just to keep the stress down on the tool. I use some special track saw clamps to clamp the track into place and get one square edge at one end. With one square edge, I can measure from that edge to the 180 mil mark and make the cut at the other end. I cut the pieces to width on the table saw, which is 450 mil. The panels were a little hard to handle, but the mag switch featherboard helps keep the panel up against the fence and I also had the engineer helping me move the pieces around and through the saw. Before I continued to sand, I used some Starbond CA glue to stabilise some of the cracks in the timber. This should help over time and just gives me peace of mind. It was then time to get the smaller panels out of glue up and rough sand them. Rough sanding straight out of glue up makes it easier to run the pieces through the machines. I used the table saw to cut the pieces to width. 
To start to cut the boards to the right height, I needed a straight edge on one end. This time I decided to use the table saw and my tapering jig from my four jigs from one sheet of plywood video. I held the piece in place with my homemade clamps and ran the boards through creating one straight edge. The two big panels of the TV unit are all cut to length and to width so now we can start focusing on the sides. The TV unit can kind of be broken down into two sections and I'm going to be working on the bottom section first. There is also two metal brackets or legs, whatever you want to call them, in the build that have been handmade by the client. I've got the bigger of the two out in the workshop now, I'm going to bring them out as I need them because A, I don't want to ruin them and B, I don't want to confuse myself. My first step is I need to cut this side to be the exact same height as this bracket, Get everything into place and then we can move on to the top section. I took measurements of both ends of the bracket to ensure they were the same and then matched that measurement to the timber. With the bottom sections all cut, I can now drill the holes in the metal brackets to prepare them to be fitted to the unit. This is the first time I've used a step metal drill bit, but it was very easy and it worked great to drill the 12mm hole I needed. I used a power drill so that I had enough juice and didn't burn out my regular drill. I made sure to drill the mounting holes so I had enough clearance for the Allen keys to easily be able to secure the bolts so that it wouldn't take me all day. The step drill bit does have a tendency to move around when first starting off, so I used a smaller 3mm drill bit to get the hole started and to create a divot to stop the bigger bit from moving around. All right, I've just transferred the holes that I've drilled on the bracket over to the timber, so now we can work on getting those two connected. And to do that, I'm gonna use threaded inserts. I use these on the dining table build and they worked perfectly, so I'm gonna go with the same method. Now, a couple of tips that I've picked up along the way with using threaded inserts. If you can, whatever you're bolting, in this case, for me, it is the bracket. If you can drill a slightly oversized hole from what your bolt is, that will give you a little bit of play when it comes to actually getting the bolts into place. The threaded inserts have to be spot on. So to give yourself a little bit of play across four different bolts, if you can have the slightly oversized hole, it will help when you get to the other end and you're trying to screw and bolt everything into place. Now to get the threaded insert in, I use three different drill bits. I use a Forster bit slightly larger than the head of the threaded insert and drill a shallow hole so that the head will sit just below the surface. Then to start the hole or the 12 mil hole, I use a spade bit because I like the point and it helps you drill nice and straight. But I can't use this the whole way through, otherwise I'll come out the other side of the timber. So once I've got the hole started, I'll come back with a regular 12 mil drill bit and drill to the depth that I need. Then when it comes to actually putting the threaded insert in, I will use some super glue. That just helps seat the threaded insert into the timber and stop it moving or coming out over time. So let's go ahead, get these into place, get the metal bracket on, and then we can head down to the other side of the timber and get the other side secured. Now that I have done this a couple of times, installing threaded inserts is quick and easy. The timber side is being secured using glue and screws, but I will hide the screw heads with wooden plugs. I use a 10mm Forstner bit to drill 10mm down and then pre-drill the hole with a regular drill bit. I use my shop stool to lift and hold the panel into place until I could get clamps on. The Mark Dana check square clamps are perfect for ensuring the two pieces of timber are square. Once everything is square, I can finish the pre-drill and drive home the 75mm screws. I cut plugs from offcuts of the timber and use these to plug the screw head holes. Before moving to the top panel, I installed the smaller bracket on the lower section. I followed the SketchUp plan and positioned the smaller bracket and again transferred the holes over to the timber and installed the threaded inserts. I took measurements of the smaller metal bracket and the entire height of the lower section and these measurements added together is the length that I need to cut the timber side panel to for the upper section. I clamp the pieces squarely into place and secure them with the same 75mm screws and plug up the holes.
To work out where the threaded inserts needed to go on the underside of the top panel, I put everything together and in the right position and then transferred the whole locations and again installed threaded inserts. I used a flush trim saw to flush trim the plugs and applied a small round over on all edges. Before I could get to final sanding, I had a large bark exclusion that needed to be filled. I used some 5 minute clear epoxy to fill it in. The 5 minute epoxy works well for this situation as it's quick to mix up and set so you can keep moving with the project without having to wait too long. I sanded the underside of the panels and applied two coats of finish. We're up to the part where I'm going to sand and finish the TV unit and I watch so many DIY videos out there and I am guilty of this myself that when we get to the end of the project we simply say that we sanded and finished the piece and we move to the end because let's be honest it's the most boring part of the video and it is definitely the most boring part of the project for me but it is also the part of the project that can really elevate your piece and give it a really great finish so I thought today I would spend some time going into detail as to how I finish my pieces and also what finish I use and why I use it. To get started with sanding, I start at 80 grit and all of the sandpaper that I use in the Small Fry Workshop is Merca branded because I think it's a really great product. Now with the 80 grit, I will also get a pencil and I will mark the board so that I know that I'm evenly sanding across the piece. This also allows me to pick up any high or low spots or areas that I need to focus on. Now what's really important, when you're holding the sander, you wanna make sure that it's nice and flat and even. I know we all have a tendency to wanna to tip the sander, but all that's gonna do is create a divot in your piece which will be really noticeable once you apply finish. So you just wanna create nice even pressure across the sander, you don't wanna to press too hard, let the sander do the job, that's what you paid for. Now, once you have removed all of those pencil marks and you know everything is flat and even, I will then move to 120 grit and repeat the process. With the pencil marks, I will just lighten them slightly and again, nice and even pressure across the piece, sanding until all of the pencil marks are removed. Once I've got everything at 120 grit sanded and everything is nice and smooth, I will then wet the timber down with just regular water. And I wanna wet the timber because it raises the grain and also cleans off all of the dust from the previous two sanding grits. Once everything is completely dry, then I'm gonna move to the 240 grit sandpaper and sand everything at 240 grit. Once I am finished with the 240 grit, that is when I will apply my first coat of finish. When it comes to finish, this is my go-to. It's called CFP Flooring by Cabots and I think it's one of the more affordable finishes on the market. I really like it because it's non-yellowing, so it's not gonna change the color of the timber too much and it's also fast drying, so I can apply multiple coats across the day and get the project finished quicker. Now it's meant for flooring, so it's super hard wearing and extremely versatile. And one of the things I really love about the CFP flooring is that once it is completely dry, if your product or project happens to be sitting in the sun, it doesn't get sticky. I've experienced that with some other finishes in the past. It's water-based, so the cleanup is really easy, and just about every project that goes out of the Small Fry Workshop is finished with CFP flooring. Now with that being said, let's go ahead and get coat one on this TV unit. As we start to apply finish, another tip for you is you do not want to be just dipping your paintbrush straight into the can because what that can do is pick up stuff from your project and contaminate all of the good finish in your can. Where possible, try and put it into a cup or something else where you can then dip your paintbrush into to apply finish. You also don't want to then go and put this cup, once you're all finished with it, back in that same can because that's as good as putting your paintbrush in. What I will do is once I have finished painting this, I'll show you what you can do with your finish to help save it so that it's good for when you get to coat two. Coat one on the TV unit is all done and I've still got some finish in my cup. So to preserve it and keep it good until I get to coat two, I use some Glad Wrap and I put a really nice tight seal across the top of the cup so that no air can get in and this will keep it just fine until we get to coat number two. Now when it comes to your paint tin, I do, as funny as it seems, 
have a couple of tips for you. If you're like me, my whole life I was taught to use a flathead screwdriver to open the paint tin. And although, yes, that does work, I found over time it damages the paint tin lid and it gets to the point at times where I can't actually get the lid on and create a nice seal and then I ruin half a can of paint. I cannot recommend enough. The next time you go to the big box store or Bunnings, pick yourself up a paint tin opener. I think they're like 60 cents from Bunnings. I have multiple of them throughout the workshop and it saves the lid of the paint tin because it does a much better job at opening it. Now when you're transferring your finish or paint from the tin to the cup, I also use a ladle because again, if you're pouring it in, then your finish or paint will sit in the lip where the lid sits and over time that dries and then you can't get the lid on, again, not creating a nice seal on your paint tin. So a really cheap ladle is a good way to go and you can use this over and over once the finish is dried on it. Now that we've got coat one on the TV unit, we're gonna wait a couple of hours for you guys, it'll be like half a second and then we'll come back and I'll show you what I do before I apply coat two or finish. It's been three hours, so coat number one is all dry and we're up to coat number two. But before I apply any more finish, I'm gonna take the sander and 600 grit sandpaper and lightly sand the workpiece. I don't use any pencil marks at this point because we've already got finish on the timber. I'm not looking to sand it off, simply just smooth it over. And the 600 grit sandpaper will give it that silky smooth finish that I'm looking for. Once I've sanded everything, I can apply coat number two. And before I apply coat number three, I'll do exactly the same thing with the 600 grit sandpaper, but I'll do it by hand and just extra light. Then I can go ahead and apply coat number three. And once we've done that, I'm gonna share the very last thing that I do before I send the finished piece off to the client. And just like that, we have three coats on the TV unit and this guy is almost ready to be sent out for delivery. The very last thing that I'm gonna do is grab some very fine steel wool. You can get it from Bunnings and I just give everything a once over. This just makes sure that everything is silky, silky smooth, picks up any high spots if there happens to be any. So once we've got this done, I can put everything back together and get this thing delivered. The TV unit is all done and before it's collected, I wanted to put it together and style it so that I could show you what it looks like as a finished project. So I hope you have liked this video. If you have, help me out by hitting those subscribe and like buttons and I'll see you on the next one.